Oh boy, here we go. We've been hit with yet another tragedy. Another loss in hip hop. It's official now. TMZ.com, Biz Marky dead at 57. This is July 17th, 2021, and this was last updated at um, 4.44 p.m. Pacific time. Rapper Biz Markie, most famous for his iconic hit, Just a Friend, has died after a series of complications from diabetes that he's been fighting for more than a year, TMZ has confirmed. A family source tells us Biz passed away in a Baltimore hospital at 6.25 p.m. Friday night. We're told his wife, Tara Hall, held his hand as he took his last breath, and the nursing staff was there to support his family telling them how strong he was through his fight. A rep for Biz tells us, we are grateful for the many calls and prayers of support that we have received during this difficult time. Biz created a legacy of artistry that will forever be celebrated by his industry peers and his beloved fans whose lives he was able to touch through music spanning over 35 years. He leaves behind a wife, many family members, and close friends who will miss his vibrant personality, constant jokes, and frequent banter. TMZ broke the story. Biz was hospitalized last summer for an ailment his rep told us was related to his type 2 diabetes. At the time, the rep said, he is receiving the best care from an amazing team of medical professionals, and we remain positive about the outcome. However, his condition remained somewhat of a mystery until April when Big Daddy Kane made an appearance on The Breakfast Club telling the show's host Biz was doing better and in a physical, um, I'm sorry, <clears throat> in a physical rehab facility. Throughout his hospital stay, rumors swirled Biz was in a coma, but our source says that was never the case. Born in Harlem, Biz first made a name for himself nationally and internationally in 1989 when his single, Just a Friend, became a top 40 hit in multiple countries and went platinum. Now, if you are uh, more involved in the hip hop world, you know that, um, you know, well, we've been new of Biz Markie before the single, um, Just a Friend, but Okay, again, in 1989, his single Just a Friend became a top 40 hit in multiple countries and went platinum. The rapper's career took off after that. He acted, did comedy, DJed, and produced music. The last time we got biz was at Reagan National Airport in D.C., where he joked about the unique way he paid off a debt to 50 Cent. Biz was just 57 years old. Rest in peace. Yeah, uh, man, this is this is so sad, y'all. This is just this is just this is too much. This is just too much. Let me. How y'all doing, man? I know. Um, what was the last week or two weeks ago or a month ago? Uh, you know, there were reports. There was like they were already putting him in the grave and the family had to confirm that he was still alive. Um, I believe he had some um, uh, uh, strokes or a stroke caused by diabetes. Um, but yeah, it's official now because also, as you can see here, and even though with Nick Cannon, people, you know, although he's disappointed me greatly, but Nick Cannon, you know, like I'm telling people, stop putting people in the grave before they gone. You know, you have people who make these videos. Oh, he's in dying condition. And oh, man, what, what the hell is going on? Y'all know Prince Marky D, DMX. Um, a lot of y'all people don't know who Don Campbell the father of, um, who's considered the father of pop locking. Okay. Uh, which is a root in, uh, b-boy dancing pop locking. 
70s pop lock him. Okay. Don pop lock Campbell. Please look it up. I did a video on him. Um, who else? Uh, 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 John Fletcher, Ecstasy, or Houdini. And y'all gotta understand, this is th these are the artists from my generation. I mean, they're older than me, but they made the music that my generation, when I was a kid and a teenager, like I was in high school when Just a Friend came out in the late 80s. And um, and that was at a time, yeah, don't get me wrong, you had crossover artists and everything, but it was um it, it it was it was a time when you could still be funny in hip hop. And I'm not talking about just being funny, you know, uh uh, uh like NWA, you know, that kind of funny, you know, um talking about um smacking bees, you know, that type of, you know, uh it was a time when you could still see what you know some today may see as corny or gimmicky or um but you know we still had love for we had respect for um biz Markey, you know he just made me mad <laughs> when um i heard him on the um 100 greatest entertainers when they voted the beatles as number one and they used him to say the beatles you know he disappointed me with that but i love biz Markey. i remember the picking boogers um Man, oh, hold on, let me. Oh, goodness gracious. Man, Ozone from, you know, uh, 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 what's his name? Ozone, uh, what's his real name? From Breaking Shabadoo, but what's his real name? Um, uh, uh, Antonio Quinones, I, I, I can't think of his, his real name. I don't think I got it right, but Ozone from Breaking, we lost. And you know, I have my suspicions with his death, what I believe caused it. But um, they st still, I don't think we still know what John Fletcher Houdini passed up, you know, um, these legends. It's sad, a lot of these young people don't even know. Also with um, Biz Markey, y'all remember, he got on that show and that was a pretty cool kid show, Yo Gabba Gabba. It had that old school hip hop, electronica, electro funk, hip hop vibe, 80s hip hop vibe. Um, but yeah, because, you know, you don't really have funny rappers today, you know. You don't really have. Um, now, the last of the funny rappers was, you know, like, well, well I guess maybe Soldier Boy. I know Luke, uh, 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 Luda brought that humor, but you know, th this was a humor like, you know, I could, I could listen to just a friend, you know, around my mama, you know, it, it, but this is sad. This is so sad. Cause this is, you know, this is stuff. It, it's like taking away my whole childhood. It's not like these these brothers. It, it ain't like they old like that, you know. It, it, man, this is just telling. This is just telling. It's telling me, you know. Well, what can we take from this? What can we take from this? You know, we got to really take care of ourselves. Um, cause y'all gotta understand this, this was the era. See, in, in, in 1988, um, just a friend now that came out in 1989. And, and, and for those who don't know, uh, Biz Markey, he was also a beatboxer. He wasn't really uh, a rapper. And I believe that some of his songs was like written by like Big Daddy Kane. And, but he, he was more of a beat, beatboxer initially, as I believe. And he would be, a, he was, um, like a beatboxer with Roxanne Chante. Um, but I remember uh, cracking up at some of his songs, you know, for this, what, how'd it go? What was it going on? This song, you got to get funky. If you can't get funky, you got to get dookie. If you can't get dookie, you got to get doo-doo. <laughs> I remember me and my friends cracking up. And that was around that time, you know, um, like I said, you could still have humor. Uh, rap was still fun, and and when you think of nineteen, the year nineteen eighty eight, which was a really really important year in hip hop or at least in rap music, um, you had that variety. 
you had the dance songs. You had MC Hammer Kid and play Salt and Pepper. You had the you know songs you could dance to. You had those ones that uh, crossed over. You know around that time, eighty eight, eighty nine. Still, you know, uh, Young MC and uh, uh, like MC Hammer and stuff. And um, you still had Run DMC. You had the Ego Rap. Those like LL Cool J. You had the Juice Crew. You had Rakim. You had Big Daddy Kane. Uh, uh, EPMD, KR. Then you had the conscious rap, hip hop. You had KRS One, with Boogie Down Productions, Public Enemy. I mean, you had all this. Like, and you had two live crew. Like somebody said, you could shake your booty to loop, but then you listen to, let's say, like some Paris or something to get you back in that mindset you need to be in. I mean, you had so much variety, but we still had fun. Y'all remember? You know, used to after school watch. Yo MTV Rap, so Rap City. Um, Y'all remember that, Five Five Freddy. And then later it was hosted by Ed Lover and Dr. Dre. And, and you remember with Rap City. And man, and that time, that was, now I think that the primary year for hip hop was 1984, because that's when you saw, um, that's when all of the elements were still very much present. But 1988, when we talk about rap, by then rap was really you couldn't you you couldn't overlook rap everybody will tell you 1988 you know 89 was when he had the song just just a friend you know some of y'all might look at that as corny today or even coonish whatever but it was fun it was you know and that was a message that was a message and we didn't see this you know i know that there have been rappers who have been clown for a, a, a crossing over or selling out. We didn't see it like that because we understood that that was Biz Markey. He was funny, you know, his album Picking Boogers, he was funny. The Vapors, you know, that was the song. Remember the Vapors? Can you feel it? Wait, 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 can I still remember? Nothing can save you, but this is the season of catching the Vapors. Y'all remember that? Said, nope, and treated me. <laughs> It treated me like a wet food stamp. Y'all, man, this was this was that time. It was doing that New Jack Swing. Yeah, we had New Jack Swing. It was doing that era. Man, this has really got me sad. This is like my childhood. Yeah, my niece just woke me up. I had fell asleep. My niece, she just woke me up. And what's crazy, I kind of dozed off looking at something with Madonna. Uh, something Madam X it just reeks and just reeks monarch beta. You know, it's, uh, it's one guy's videos, Pockets of the Future. He referred to her as Madam Expiration Date, um, Madam Adrenochrome. Yeah, um, yeah, you can see she's getting her Cruella DeVille on. I happen to fall asleep. With that playing on my laptop, goodness gracious. But yeah, my niece just woke me up to tell me Biz Markey passed. It was like, you knew it was coming, but dang, come on, what's going on? What's going on, y'all? Um, let me look. I, I ain't even, uh, well, let me see his Twitter. Biz Markey, the pioneer rapper, producer, and beatboxer whose jovial goofiness and innovative samples made him a singular presence in hip hop, has died at the age of 57. Biz Markey, the clown prince of hip hop, dead at 57. Yeah, and his career went on. And you remember Yo Gabba Gabba, the show, the kids show. This is this is really sad, man. In 2008, Just a Friend made number 100. Hold on. On VH1's list of the 100 greatest hip hop singles of all time. Markey was born in Manhattan in the neighborhood of Harlem. He was raised on Long Island and graduated from Brentwood High School in 1982. Markey began his career in New York City nightclubs and later gained regional recognition by performing at colleges in Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. Man. Let me at least read the 80s. Biz Markey was interviewed in 1986 in the 1986 cult documentary, Big Fun in the Big Town. Markey released his debut album, Going Off, 
Yes, Bismarck going off. Oh, I remember that. In 1988, which attracted a fair amount of attention, largely due to the lead single, Make the Music With Your Mouth Biz. The album also featured the underground hit singles, Nobody Beats the Biz. Oh my gosh, memories. Nobody Beats the Biz. Oh man, me and my friends. Vapors and Picking Boogers. On October 10th, 1989, Marky's second studio album, The Biz Never Sleeps, was released on Cold Chill and Warner Brothers Records, produced by Marky, his cousin Cool V, and Paul C. The single Just a Friend, in which he alternates between rap and singing, became Marky's most successful single, reaching, oh goodness, yeah, that's my tablet, like the scriptures, reaching number nine on the Billboard charts. The song interpolates the 1968 song, You Got What I Need, by singer-songwriter Freddie Scott, whose basic chord and melody provided the bass for the song's chorus, Just a Friend. I'm sorry. Just a Friend was ranked 81st on VH1's 100 Greatest One-Hit Wonders. He was not a one-hit wonder. He was not. I, you know what? That's That made me mad, those lists. They, they need to stop. Just like Watch Mojo. Please stop. If you are not a part of the genre and know nothing of the genre, please don't make these lists. VH1's 100 Greatest One Hit Wonders in 2000 and later as number 100 on VH1's 100 Greatest Songs of Hip Hop in 2008. The music video directed by Lionel C. Martin chronicles the rapper's woman problems. And let me skip through to the 2000s. In 2010, I'm just giving y'all a wiki quickie. Marky appeared on VH1's 100 Greatest Artists of All Time, providing commentary throughout the series. Marky himself was not included on the list. On November 9th, 2010, he appeared on the Aquabots' new EP, Radio Down, on the title track. On November 11, 2010, Marky set in with The Roots, on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon and performed Just a Friend with actor Jeff Goldblum. Hmm, I gotta find that. In 2013, Marky toured with the Yo Gabba Gabba Live Show. That year, his song Just a Friend was featured in Saints Row 4, which included the pop station 107.77, The Mix FM. He appeared on the CN show Mad as the hip hop hobbit. He appeared on the CN show Mad as a hip hop hobbit. He voiced rapper Rhymes in his DJ Tiny Timmy Scratchit in the Randon, Randy Cunningham ninth grade ninja episode of Hip Hop Apocalypse Now. Mm, he guest starred in SpongeBob SquarePants episode Kenny the Cat. Wow, and he did the voice of Snorlock, the beatboxing slug in the episode of Adventure Time. So that's great. He kept. He was on Empire. So that's great that it looks like he kept working. He made an appearance in the season three finale of the ABC series Blackish in 2017. And in 2020, Marky started hosting a radio show on Sirius XM's LL Cool J Rock the Bells radio channel 43 every weekday from what's 13 o'clock. Uh, one o'clock to uh, 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 yeah, four o'clock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. In April 2020, he was hospitalized due to complications from type 2 diabetes. As of July 2020, his wife and family have not commented publicly on his condition. In December 2020, it was reported reported that Marky was staying in, rehabil in a rehabilitation facility as a result of a stroke and had, he had stuffed, suffered after going into a diabetic coma. Yeah, this happened to my auntie who just passed a couple of months ago. On July 1st, 2021, rumors of his death circulated on Twitter. His representative told Rolling Stone the news of Biz Markey's passing is not true. Biz is still under medical care, surrounded by professionals who are working hard to provide the best health care possible. Biz Markey died on July 16th, 2021 at age 57. So yeah, it's official. Oh man, we lost another one. Um, man. 
I know it's like got me wanting to, man, this is crazy. This is crazy. Remember the vapors? Oh, can I remember the, uh, <laughs> man, make me want to play some music. But I'm telling you, 1988, yeah, like I said, that was the time you had so much variety. You had, now, the gangster rap was not dominant now, even though it's more dominant now, but it wasn't dominant. It was underground, but it, even though you had, like, I mean, just a friend that I came out in 89, but I think 88 because I'm thinking vapors, I'm thinking going off the album. Biz Marky is going off the biz. Go, Biz Mark. Go, Biz. Oh, man, y'all just don't know. 1988. Goodness. If it wasn't for me having to run away from home and stuff, it would have been a great year. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for the gang violence, if it wasn't for crack cocaine, it would have been a great year. Really, it would have. Um, man, because that's my days of beat when I was uh getting my new jack swing on and I was dancing and still rapping before I got more into singing and um, so I remember my friends, we used to listen to them, to the album and be giggling and stuff. And it, and it was dope, you know, um, oh man. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, the gangster stayed on the ground. You know what I'm saying? What, what we later called gangster rap, you know, what was later coined gangster rap. It, it was, it, it wasn't prevalent like that it wasn't you had you had nwa you had the ghetto boys uh 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 but you know you had ice t and ice t he you know um yeah his song is it, it wasn't like that you know even though he's considered the father but you still had um because for one they were still uh uh, uh trying to get rap promoted to the mainstream but they had to buy 1988 now run dmc of course they helped to open up the you know doors when we talk you know when it came to music video because you had to if you were able to get the music videos played okay that was important i mean having a music video that was very much important because a lot of uh, artists from the 70s they didn't really get to go beyond like 1983 and um, cause you know, that's why, you know, with v, uh, MTV, the first video played on MTV video killed the radio star. And I remember when MTV would not play black videos, maybe if you were Tina Turner or Prince, but even with Michael Jackson, there was a resistance, you know? Um, but by 1988, you know, you had, I don't know, which came first, Yo MTV, it was both the same year, 1988. Um, Rap City on BET and Yo MTV Raps. And it used to be like Yo MTV Raps was like once a week. Just imagine you couldn't see rap videos <laughs> until, you know, until like a special hour, a special day and time. You know, they wouldn't show rap videos otherwise unless you, you know, like them underground channels. Um, and then, you know, if it, if it wasn't for the box, the video jukebox channel, which came along around 1989 or 1990, remember the box, the video jukebox net, net, network, a lot of rappers may not have been successful because the box, they would play them videos that MTV and BET would not. But just a friend that was very MTV friendly, you know. And see, that was the thing. At that time, we had... Uh, you had uh, Will Smith, um, and understand, I was like what you consider a hip hop purist, but we always had still love and respect for Biz Markey. And we understood that he was, you know, he, he was comedic with his song. So we understood that, you know, it was not seen as crossing over necessarily or selling out or because that was the type of rapper he was, but he still made some songs that were cuts, you know, like using that uh, sample pop and don't take no mess for the vapors. Wasn't there like two versions of the vapors? Yeah. But you had, you had the kid in play, you had the, you know, 
the the hip hop songs that were more for party dancing, you know, with Kid and Play. You had uh uh uh, uh who's with Kid and Play with them, them Salt and Pepper, uh, uh uh Sweet uh um uh, Sweet Tea on the Smooth Tip. Uh, you know, you had the Native Tongues. And you had, you know, the alternative rappers, a tribe called Quest, Jungle Brothers, uh, 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 De La Soul. You had, I mean, it was room. It, it, it was room. It, it, that was the time for rap. Even if a lot of the other hip hop elements were not as popular, because this is another thing too, we got to remember that you can't have hip hop without the dancing. It was the dancing, the b-boy dancing, and the beatboxers and all that, and the graffiti artists that actually drew more attention to hip hop music. And that's what actually led more to the movies. And of course, the DJ. Um, you say you remember when Biz Markie did a show, Backyard Band in DC. And how y'all doing, by the way? Leaders of the new school, yes. Buster Rhymes, leaders of the new school. Yep, that was the group he was with. And it's so funny. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Just yesterday, I was just thinking and having a discussion on um, when, okay, because we all know that rapping has always been about like your, your ego. There's always been ego involved in rapping. And I'm talking about long before the culture of hip hop, okay? Before we had this culture genre hip hop, you know, the art of rapping goes way back. Blues singers, West African storytellers, uh, poets, black nationalist poets, uh, uh, radio DJs, pimps, <laughs> your rap game, you know, uh, black nationalists. H. Rap Brown and, and then brothers like Muhammad Ali and Ruby Ray Moore, Dolomite. So rapping. Ego was always involved. And I, I was just talking yesterday about how, um, yeah, I was just talking about how uh, there was that time in the 90s. Because when you think about the 90s and the grunge era and that time of low self-esteem, you had songs like Beck, Loser, and the Offspring song, Low Self-Esteem. You had uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit. It was this time, like what, what's the name said, with the marketing depression and stuff. And even with hip hop, you kind of saw that Generation X effect. You know, the slacker generation, um, questioning your life, questioning, you know, your, if, are you secure? And so I was thinking of them songs like, because it wasn't, in, in rap, it was like, you're supposed to brag, you know, I'm the baddest this. I'll take you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking necessarily anything like violent or, but you know, like you think even with rappers to light, I got a color TV so I can see the Knicks pay, play basketball. I got a Lincoln Continental, you know, it's about bragging, braggadocious, um, bravado, macho bravado. I definitely, definitely, I, I coined that era of Def Jam, like with LL Cool J, I'm bad and, and run DMC. That was, I call that the ego rap, the era of ego rap, <laughs> you know, different eras of rap or different genres of rap. And I always called that the ego rap. But then in the 90s, just like how rock music, metal was this uh, loud party, rock all, you know, uh, this bragging kind of. Um, you know, just as how rock music changed to, you know, going more towards the grunge and alternative. And it, it kind of became that way in hip hop as well. And I was talking, you, you know, you wouldn't think that you would have rap songs where you'd hear like a kind of low self-esteem. This is just too ironic. So I was thinking of songs that, you know, like, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I remember that in the early 90s and the far side, I, you know, I was like debating what started that. Was it, um, I wish, Skilo, I wish I was a little bit tall, I, or um, or far side passing me by, where now you got rappers. I think that kind of goes back to the alternative rappers. You know, when you think about me, myself, and I, but that wasn't really, you know, I don't know, just things like, I wish I was a little bit taller. Those are things that you didn't really rap about, you know, like like expressing vulnerability and perhaps insecurity. That was like, <laughs> you know, things you didn't do in rap, but that was what was so great because now you have alternative rappers 
and you have where, you know, I can express, but I wouldn't say that with me, myself and I, I, because, um, De La So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that because they were, the, the song is very secure and you representing who you are and you'd be surprised how that song changed, changed even the image of hip hop. You know, taking us from the whole with the gold chains and the Kangos and the bragging and the remember them Davy Crockett hats and the, you know, the now all of a sudden you're beginning to see brothers looking like plug one and plug two and yeah, yeah. Uh some call them like the hippies of rap daisy rap or whatever. But yeah, so what came to mind, I said maybe even before I wish by Skilo and Far Side passing me by, she keeps on passing me by. But then too, Roxanne, Roxanne. Well, that was just basically I want to be your man. That was still the thing, at least, yeah, with Roxanne, Roxanne, at least with UTFO. Uh, uh, they still made that move though, you know, so I wouldn't say that that was like you know, brother, weak uh, insecurities. He, he, at least he was still making that move. But I was thinking of, um, it just came in my mind yesterday, just, to, it, it, you know, I thought of later, just a friend, you know? Um, so that kind of, you know, ironically, I was thinking of that, you know, when you think of just a friend before passing me by and Skilo, I wish. Yeah, but there was a time, go see the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I remember day to day nightmares. You know, y'all may see that as corny today, but that was that was a really fun time, especially if you was a kid. You know, we was kids. Um, I remember nightmares, Anita the Beast, and day to day, and he was always being compared to Slick Rick. Um, you know, the stories when they used to be stories, songs with stories. I remember I was talking to y'all about the song You Ain't Fresh. Who made that? You ain't fresh. You ain't fresh. And I remember, I mean, we going back with that now. Like Boogie Boys, Fly Girl, remember Pee Wee's Dance? That's going back to like 86. But man, and, and like when, uh, I was really sad, like when um, John Fletcher Ecstasy at um, Houdini died, found myself listening to, to Funky Beat, Funky Beat, Funky Beat. And that, that fun, you know, that fun. Man, it's <laughs> a fly girl is a girl that wait, wait, how did it go? It had that funky <clears throat> and it used to, I used to get mad because there was a song that sounded very similar to a fly girl. It was a song called Let's Go All the Way. And you would hear that like if you went roller skating, they love playing that at roller rings. Let's go all the way. And I used to get mad because I used to think that that was a fly girl coming out. One love, one love. You're lucky just, and, and oh man, I told y'all when them kids was booing, I'm at a show and you know, it was these white kids and stuff and they booing Houdini. This was like in the late, late nineties or early, early two thousands. I think it was more of the late, late nineties. And because these kids didn't know who Houdini was. And then you saw a couple of black people that now they got on stage. It was like a jam for peace or something in Milwaukee, some festival where it was a lot of artists. Um, artists of that time. And then they had one throwback artist with um, Houdini. So they're getting on stage and everything. And I'm hearing kids, I told y'all about this, you know, and I noticed it was a mainstream crowd. It was all white kids. And I'm hearing like booing. And I'm like, what? Do y'all know who this is? This is Houdini. These were like the first hip hop artists to go on tour. You know, I'm like, man, they've been doing this for years. So they, they weren't even paying that no mind. And then for me to see a couple of black kids, Trying to boo too? But then, you know, they just started acapella friends. <laughs> How many of us have them? And then, so then everybody started joining. Well, at least those who knew the black kids who were booing with the white kids, they started singing along with it. They didn't know who made that song, obviously. Obviously, they knew the words to it because maybe they heard their mama or they found older family members listening to it in the house, but they didn't know that this was the group who made it. So they started rapping along, the white kids looking around like, what's going on? Because <laughs> they didn't know that song. And Dang, I'm telling you, they were the best acts. By the, like I said, by the time they got to the Freaks Come Out at Night, 
The crowd was wild. It took a while for them to calm the audience down for the next act. See, because they've been doing this for years. They've been doing this for years. That was a great moment. A lesson learned, you know, for people who want to um, don't want to show respect. Yep. Silk Times Leather. Yes, I remember the females. <laughs> Silk Times. Yes, remember Father MC? We thought he was going to blow up like MC Hammer. If you do for me, I'll do. Wasn't that um, Mary J. Blige singing on that? And um, yeah, P. Diddy was the dancer. Who knew? <laughs> yes, and, and man. Bad times. Okay, I'm trying to remember. Bad times by Captain Rap. Oh, wow, you taking it. Man, nothing like old school. You say, check out this link. You got to post it. May not be able to post the link in here. Man, this is crazy. And the thing is, like, right when um, Prince Marky D died, I had, you know, sat and watched um, Crush Groove. Oh, y'all remember when that came out? You remember when you first saw Crush Groove? Now, my family, we had to wait. We saw it in 85, but when it was on cable, we didn't go to the show to see it, or at least I didn't, you know. Um, show, the movie, Chicago, we say the show, <laughs> for those who don't know. But yeah, uh, Crush Groove, man, when you first saw that, and, um, and people, if these kids, they don't know how big the Fat Boys were. And the Fat Boys were dope. They weren't just gimmicky rappers. They was dope. Disco 3, man. And a lot of us forgot about Buffy. That's why I had to do a video um, talking about Buffy. But this is, man, it's like. Uh, it's like I could go and listen to Biz Markie, but it's only going to make me sad. Yep, Juice Crew, in a way, they kind of saved hip-hop because I know a lot of people talk about hip-hop is dead or they talk about the crossover, this and that. Like I told y'all, I was worried about hip-hop back in 1987 when, you know, I, when they was giving the Beastie Boys, and don't get me wrong, I had liked the Beastie Boys before the man mainstream knew about them really but um you know when they start giving them more exposure and shine you know just as run dmc was getting shine you know mcv and stuff so the next thing you know you got rappers run dmc's style or sound is changing up a little bit after the tricky they're doing songs like mary mary why are you bugging uh you, you know take it from the monkeys and using more metal and rock influence and then you have the fat boys now they making songs with the beach boys and those songs were kind of fun but you know i, I remember i started getting worried then because back then I, I thought that rap was over back in 87 ain't that crazy little did i know the following year it was like it was fun but i was you know i knew what i was beginning to see you know like a crossing over but it, it was like the juice crew kind of saved it, you know, and who knew that the conscious era was just about to begin in hip hop. And you had the Juice Crew and man, gosh. Right. And see, the thing is that I, even though I was one of those who eventually became a critic of, of MC Hammer, like I admitted to, um, it's just the way it, we we love him when he first came out. At least those of us like in Chicago and you know my family moved to Milwaukee at the time. It, I think it was just the fact that now when he came out with like you know the songs like Pump It Up and Turn This Mother Out, we love that. But it, it was just I think after Can't Touch This and you know and him doing songs like you know the Adams Family and, and Too Legit to Quit. I think because uh, we weren't used to seeing a rapper get that big, you know. Uh, or have music videos that cost that much money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because even Run DMC didn't take it to that level. So uh, we were so worried. It was so important that uh, hip hop kept it real and, and stayed true to the game. It was that was that was so important at the time. Whether you made you know dance songs or or, or, or what was later called uh, gangster or whatever, it was like so important to keep it real. Stay. It, True to the game. 
yeah, we was we was hella wrong. We was hella wrong back then. MC Shad, the to the bridge, the bridge. That poor MC Shad. Yeah, this is this is so sad. This is so sad. And it's like I want to go and just get. I wish I could play some stuff now. I was worried about copyright. I was wondering at the beginning of uh, pumping up the video, I was wondering, was that like a diss to run DMC when Ham was pumping up? But he did kind of take they, they spot in a way, you know? Yeah. Uh, and see, people got to understand too with Houdini artists like Houdini. Um, yeah, like uh, what you saying, Rashmir Jones, um, hip hop, uh, RB radio stations didn't mess with hip hop, right? That's what they got to understand when you consider Curtis Blow and Houdini, they had like an RB kind of sound. Um, and like I be telling people, this is another thing. What you know, like when we be debating about Eminem, and you know, you know how I feel about Eminem, and you can check out my videos if you don't know. But and we see rapping as who can rap faster now, who can squeeze more syllables in a single bar. That's not necessarily what rapping was about. And understand when I used to rap, I was one of those rappers that could rap fast. That was like my flow, my style. And I had been doing it like that since the 80s. But it was rapping was more about your lines. The originality, the metaphors you use, you know what I'm saying? Your flow. It wasn't just about how fast you could rhyme. Whether Big Daddy Kane was the rap, whether he was rapping fast or was a smooth operator, it was more about the lines, you know? And that's why too, there's that humor is lacking that we once had in, in, in rap songs, you know? Because there's so much focus on how many, uh, 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 Syllables I could squeeze and you know, like with rap God, how many? I mean, you like I said, anything past 1994, because you know, you can't impress me because I've already heard it at its prime. I've heard it as fast as you can get. Of course, I'm from the shot, twisted, do a die, crucial conflict. I've already heard. You know, you can't impress me. There's nothing because I heard it. In every form, monotone flow, you know, Coogee Rap Master Ace, I've heard it. You cannot, there's nothing, Big Plum, there's nothing that can come along that can, ooh, wow, impress me like that. I mean, yeah, I, I can get impressed. I can say, ooh, this person's good, but there's not nothing that can wow me anymore. Okay, if you've lived through it and and to see it was more about your lines and we forgetting that. We forgetting that it's about your lines. Perfect example, Muhammad Ali, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You can't mess with Muhammad Ali. That See, you don't have lines like that. You don't have songs where you remember every word or you you your favorite line, your favorite part of this rap song, which the part you would rewind over. And I'm not talking about the music. I'm talking about the lines, funny lines. Lines that people want to bite off of. Like, you know, I, I take seven MCs, put them in line which Eminem did bite off of. <laughs> you know, you don't have that. Forget Oreos, eat Cool J cookies. You don't have that. And this so-called conscious rap today, it's safe, okay? It's safe. It was better when it was a time when, um, you know, you had a lot of record labels wasn't as willing to sign rappers. So, you know, they felt there was a little more freedom before they got with these big time labels. And like I said, they, they're swallowing everything up. There is no more, um, all these labels, you know, it's just basically three major conglomerates with EMI, Warner, uh, what's the other one? Universal, is it? It swallowed up all these labels. Last independent record labels, rap 
record labels I heard was Rap a Lot Le Records. And I think he sold out. Uh, who was that? Jay Prince and Luke Two Live Crew. A uh, Luke of Two Live Crew. Those are like the last independent. But even with these these labels, these you remember, like I said, there is no more. Uh, they're all swallowed up. Epic Records, Arista, uh, Buddha, Motown. Uh, 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 um, uh, what was Parliament Funkadelic? They was on Casablanca Records. All of these Jive Records, Uptown, The Face, they've all been swallowed up. So that's why you be wondering why is it like the same five artists that you hear on the radio? And I don't know because I ain't listened to the radio in so long. I just listen to old school what I already got. You know, there's no... Uh, distinct sound and everybody trying to sound like everybody. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I remember when a lot of people like Dana Day and trying to sound like Slick Rick, there's always somebody who have this major influence that a lot of people want to bite off of. But um, now it's ridiculous. And the thing is the, a sound to go on for so long, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like auto tube went on forever. And you know what? I could is if if you can if you can come with a funky beat or you know what I'm saying, I could go with the mumble rapping. Cause people want to talk about the mumble rapping, but you got to remember the influence. Cause it's also it's about rap is about hold on, hold on, I'm gonna be done in a minute. Rap is about your lines, but you gotta also remember the jazz influence in rap, the influence of scat singing. Your lines, but then there's also see we want to talk about mumble rapping. Um, when you think of uh 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 why why think of Cab Calloway, Ella Fitzgerald, jazz scat singing, you know, and a lot of the job talking, and when you think of the for shizzle, a lot of that that came out of the 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 the, the, the 70s, the pimp talk, the you know what I'm saying. My brothers in the early 80s used to do that for shizzle, for sheezy, all that talking and stuff. When you think of that. And hip hop, the hip, the hip, the hip, hip hop. You don't stop rock to the bang bang book. You think the mingity mingity ming ming the mac daddy. You know all of that. That's you know. But if you can do that, like I think one of the most brilliant hip hop songs was Daz Effects. They want effects. Oh yeah, remember the Hit Squad, the Hit Squad, EPMD and Red Band and, and K Solo and oh boy, but um. I'm going to have to get out of here, y'all. As much as I want to discuss hip-hop with y'all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, if you can... See, that's... The way they did that with Daz Effects, they want effects. And it was hardcore. You know what I'm saying? But they were taking every little nursery rhyme, jingle, commercial jingle, and, and, and every little quote, and, you know, and they made a dope Hardcore song. They want effects. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, skidoo, boom, skidoo, boom, boom. Now, if you could do that, it's like what um Ice T was saying about uh old dirty bastard. You know, shimmy ya, shimmy ya. That that ain't easy trying to rap like that. That's the you know people got to You got to have like a straight up rhythm. <laughs> yes, I remember spellbound. We forget the dance element. We forget the charisma, the wit that used to be a part of rap. Everything's just about trying to how many syllables you can squeeze into a bar. Either that or it's just repetitive. You know, the thing is, I could get with the, 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 the it, it, you know, if you can come funky, but it's the thing that everybody's doing it. If this was just this particular person's sound or style, then I could roll with it. But when everybody the same sound, but you know, there's no individuality. They see, okay, this works. Let's just roll with this style because this is what's, you know, or that's what they believe is working. And now you got this nasty X rated, not little nasty X rated or whatever. See, he ain't fooled me. I, I was warning my daughter, my, you know, don't fall for that old town road or whatever. Now you got that mess. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's time for me to grow up. There's Marky's passing. It lets me know that, you know, it's time for me to move on. 
Got to get more with the Bible. Um, you know, I want to go and listen to some old school stuff, but it's telling me that, you know, that time is over. That era, you know, getting getting rather sad now. Getting rather sad. Um, it's a frantic situation. Oh, goodness. Why are you bringing it? Rude. I got to get out of here. Why are you bringing up these songs? It's a frantic situation. Yes, Planet Rock, Buffalo Gals. Play at your own risk. What you know about that? Look, looking for the perfect beat. Oh wait, I, I now I got I got to feel <laughs> I got to feel bad <laughs> thinking about Africa Bambata. But Nucleus, Nucleus, underrated pioneers of hip hop. Nucleus. I had reuploaded Computer um, Age Push the Button. Cause that song, the message in that song. Look for my video. I mean, my up, my upload of that song, and I had put together a video. Even though I got one thing wrong in the words and putting it together, the video. Are we under their control, or are they under our control, or what? And I put it. Uh, but I, I gave y'all the correction. But I had put together a video to that, and y'all can check out my twenty-five contributors to hip hop's downfall. Um, hopefully it's not blocked because they don't give you any sort of warning when something, well, not something you could recognize offhand when they decide to block something due to copyright, they give you little to no warning or, you know, or notification rather. Yeah, man, this <laughs> is smart. <laughs> Goodness, you name them songs. And that's another thing. Not all hip hop songs were rap. That's what people got to also remember. A lot of the early, in fact, a lot of them early hip hop songs, like you think of, uh, now I'm not talking about the funk songs that the B Boys danced to, like James Brown and stuff. I'm talking about a lot of them, them early hip hop songs, you know, when we was finding that sound influenced by electronica and electro funk, you know. Um, Think Herbie Hancock Rocket. I'll, I'll, um, it's time, uh, uh, Al Nia Fish by Hasim Sim. It's time, you know, and all that with the robotic sound and everything. Of course, then you got the freestyle. We forget about freestyle, Shannon, let the music play. Um, Lisa Lisa, a lot of the freestyle, um, and what they want to call Latin hip hop, Niobe, please don't go. Uh, what's the? They're playing our song. Don't you hear the music? See what y'all know about that, or <laughs> what y'all remember about that? I know a lot of people. I don't know a lot of brothers had got into the freestyle. <laughs> now I can't say that my brothers was listening to freestyle, but you know me being a, still being a girl. Uh, the Mexican by Jelly Bean. Oh my gosh. Is that that morning? Hey, morning. Oh, oh, you guys. Goodness. Why is you going there? Oh my gosh. Is that that song, Morning or something? And see, you know, I'm from Chicago also with house music. Oh, like it was a song. I didn't know that uh, Debbie Harry. Well, she's canceled to me now because, you know, she was with. Uh, Marina Abramovic, but um, it was a song, a freestyle song. I had no idea she did that. Debbie Harry, she tried everything. She went from punk to disco to rap <laughs> with Rapture to New Wave, Call Me, and even mess with reggae, The Tide Is High. And she even had a free, and that was kind of on the country tip too. And she had freestyle. What was that? Um, Ooh, baby, I feel the spin. I did not know that was Debbie Harry. I had no idea till years later. Yeah, I know about that stuff. And, and the beat goes down. Are you talking about the um the whispers or Sonny and Cher? <laughs> yeah, new shoes. I can't wait. That was oh man. That's one of them songs by white artists that they will still play on the black radio stations. Like a lot of songs, okay, there were songs that were made by white artists that they played back when the songs came out, but when they play like throwback songs now, old school songs, they don't play it. 
Like it was a song I used to couldn't stand, but people like Say La Vie, Say La Vie by Roddy ne Robbie Neville. But come find out, Robbie Neville making money today. He was producing songs for Britney Spears and all of them. But I used to couldn't stand that song. Like I didn't like Phil Collins' studio. I didn't like that. But oh, Pet Shop Boys, Western Girls, that was a song. Western town. And see, if you know house music, we knew of the song Western Girls before. Um, because it would be a lot of songs, like if you were underground in hip hop or house, they they were underground and it'd be like a year or two before they hit the mainstream charts. Like uh uh like if you you knew of the underground dance and house and hip hop and all of that and, and high energy and stuff. One example, um New Order, uh 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 what was that how does it feel? What was that, Blue Monday or something? Like there was 1983 and then it became a hit like in 87. Um in Western Girls, I remember that was one of them songs and uh Point of No Return by Expose. There was two versions of that. I remember too, Dexter Poindexter. What wait, no, he didn't make the original. Ole, ole, feel it hot, hot, hot. It was, it was like, I think like an African or, or, or like a Caribbean artist made the original. But I remember that. I'm ready by Kano. Yes. That's song sample. Whoop, there it is. Yellow Magic Orchestra. I'm telling you. Oh, we got to throw a party up in here. Joe Jackson stepping out. Oh, I used to love that. Do, 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 do. Oh, gosh. Memories, y'all. I know people are trying to get my attention. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the person. We were trying to get my attention. Oh, my gosh. Gary Newman cars. <laughs> oh, wow. We taking it back. Devo. Um, talking heads. Uh, uh, we could go there. We could go there. See, I bet you all don't know what y'all know about Yazoo. Yes, what y'all know about that? What y'all know about State Farm and Situation and um, Move Out, Don't Wait. What was it? Move Out, Don't Mess Around. You bring me down. Uh, wait, was that Allison Mole? Didn't know that was a female singer. What y'all know about that? Y'all know about the Peshma? <laughs> We talk about white art. How we go from Biz Marquee, hip hop. <laughs> but y'all making me feel better, so it's all good. What y'all know about that? <laughs> oh, oh, Kimberly Johnson, hip hop, bebop. No. Ah, memories. Oh, they used to play that in house music mixes. Oh, man. Yeah, Biz is gone. <laughs> Wait, y'all, y'all are somebody arguing? Somebody? Oh my gosh, Berlin, take my breath away. That's one of those songs. Um, it's kind of hard to admit that I like, but that was it was a ballad, but it was a kind of new wave ballad. So it was, you know, with the synthesized sound, it was okay to like that ballad, you know. Oh my gosh, it's spring again. Oh, I'm about to find that. Wait, I totally forgot about that. That was so funny. Where he was taking the um, sample back together again. That video. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get sad. I'm gonna get sad. Now y'all finna have me sad. Oh, wait, y'all got me now. I gotta look back. Here's Marky, it's spring again. I remember that. Oh, those are. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I ain't seen this. I'll tell you, I have not seen this since what, like 1989 or 1990? Dang, I want to play it really bad. <laughs> I can't, you know, I don't want to, you know, with the copyright. Oh my gosh, I remember this. <laughs> I'm just sad I can't watch. I hope he enjoyed his life. 
I really do. Do you know? I have not seen this in over over 30 years. Do y'all know? I totally forgot about this. <laughs> It's a YouTuber I can't stand up in here. Monty Woodgrain, but he kind of mind me of Biz Marquis. <laughs> oh, I ain't seen this in so long. Y'all. Yeah. Man, this is... <laughs> hey, it's funny when everybody was saying um, he was unattractive. When I was a teenager, Biz Marquis was out. I kind of saw him as cute. I know you think I'm crazy, but remember, I said I was attracted to KRS One because he was so intelligent. But you know, being Biz Marquis was funny. I would have liked to have dated him. <laughs> you know, you know, just fun. Girls like somebody that's funny. You got fun with. I know it sounds crazy. I know you don't believe me, but Dun Dada, George Crant, Doom 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 Da Da. Bap. Yeah, I was talking about this. We want to talk about white boy rappers. The dopest, I mean, some of the earlier white boy rappers actually or contributors to hip hop. I know y'all may not want to hear me saying this, but I was talking about how you had those that came out of like Germany and Austria. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, some of the earlier white contributors to hip hop are actually European, even if you want to consider like Italo disco, you know, like the Giorgio Marauders and stuff. But um, what I'm thinking, um, you know, the contribution craft work, like when you consider that now don't get it twisted because they said they were influenced by the R&B uh, that was coming out of the United States. They admitted like craft work themselves that they were influenced also by the funk music that was coming out of the U.S. in the 70s and stuff but um like i remember when i first heard numbers and you know in trans europe express which is sampled in um what's trans europe now i do believe that numbers is sampled in baby got back by um the german group craft work and um trans europe express sampled in planet rock but yeah some of the earlier uh, 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 artists or even rappers, they kind of came out uh, of Europe. Like, <laughs> I'm thinking Falco, I'm a, wasn't he Austrian? <laughs> Remember Amadeus and his version of Dear Common Style? Don't turn around. Uh oh. I actually liked his version of Dear Common or whatever, when he's rapping in his little language. And like with Amadeus, superstar. Remember Amadeus? A lot of people, um, yeah, when you think of the UK artists, art, art of noise, and uh, like someone mentioned Buffalo Gals. Um, yeah, Michael, that's what Mal Malcolm McLaren, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Keep moving down. I don't even know what they have. Take the little bit of them down the lane. Keep moving down. <laughs> nah, I ain't never get into that. I ain't had nothing against them, though. I never got into the House of Pain. You know, I, I, it's like I had a respect for them, but I like the fact that they was, you know, doing they, they was representing them. That's what I like. They wasn't wannabes, and they wasn't trying too hard to be. See, I had way more respect for, like, a group like House of Pain over Eminem. The thing is, you know, they was being themselves. People think that Eminem's being himself, but no, nah, not really. Now, I can't say I got into him. If I would say white rappers that I listen to, uh, I did like, uh, oh, well, yeah, my, the, actually the first cassette saying about, you know, that it wasn't, you know, it was my money. Believe it or not, third base of um, stepping to the AM. I used to love to dance, and that was. You know, I ain't get into the gas face and stuff, but stepping to the AM, that was tight. It was dope. You could dance to it. And I used to like, I used to dance back then. But um, yeah, and the Beastie Boys, it was all I like, uh, you know, like uh, the new style and, and Paul Revere and um, later Blast Monkey. I actually like Sabotage a lot. I think that was more for them. That was more 
they genre that was meant for, you know, songs like Sabotage. But um, I did listen to In Too Deep. It was hard though, because In Too Deep was nasty, but the songs was funky. I don't know who, who was producing their songs. You know, like they used the sample to, um, what was the song, Sugar Free by the group Juicy in the 80s with The Weeknd. I remember the song Toss Up and Back to the Hotel. The thing is, they they was, they was, they was real nasty, like real sexist, real misogynist, real, you got to do the crew. You got to do the crew, you know. And so it was kind of hard. I remember me and my friend, us listening to them, it was like, uh, <laughs> love shack. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I, it, those of the house music underground, it, um, I remember my brother saying Rock Lobster was that song. I tried to listen to that. That sound like a serious acid trip. I don't get it. Rock Lobster underground or whatever, that sounds crazy. It's hard for me to believe that they were actually um, uh, any of our people listening to Rock Lobster. I don't get it. Oh, so tiny happy people. Why, how could I not like you, Penazoy? <laughs> now, I didn't really get into R.E.M., my one brother who was like a Carlton did. I didn't really get into REM or um, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't really. I didn't. Um, maybe I kind of slept on the whole thing with the um, Beastie Boys later on into the nineties. Yeah, and another member who they say he was like a fourth member passed away. I think that honestly, I think uh, MCA and he the one who's dead. I believe that something there's some things questionable with his death, considering the way he began talking. You know, and he was like the baddest one, as in bad boy. He was like the baddest one, and then he became like a monk. Like I remember them talking about the violence and the sexual assault and stuff at Woodstock, and I'm like, what? Who are these people? Who are these guys? Because they were bad. I, I tell people, even though I understand with, with PSK and Schooly D and, you know, but I, if I, like I said, the first, if if you want to say gangster rappers are really bad boys, I'm not talking about bad as in tough. I'm talking about talking about bullying people, jumping on people, uh, 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 assaulting girls. The first rappers that I heard like that were the Beastie Boys. And this ain't something, you know, they were the first, and I had to, in my hip hop series, I had to do a little part where I showed, like uh, Ice Cube had a group called CIA before NWA, he was with a group called CIA. And if you listen to some of it, you could hear that influence. And, and Ice Cube was a fan of the Beastie Boys. That's why also I had to talk about in my video, series the 25 contributors of hip-hop's downfall i also had to talk about um let me see if that's still up for y'all about to come back to this i'm, I'm kind of don't want to listen to it because i'm gonna get sad uh 25 contributors yes let me see because it could be a thing of i can see it but y'all can't yeah so check out my series 25 contributors to hip hop's downfall. Part one, two, three. I stopped. I was going to complete it years ago, but I left it alone because they kept coming with me on copyright. And I was like, this if I can't play the music along with this and give y'all the visuals and all that, I don't want to. I hope it's a thing where I can see it and y'all can see it because, yeah, you'd really appreciate this. Uh, I see someone else. Oh, yeah, it's it's been uploaded. But those who appreciate my series, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, so check it out. 
25 contributors to hip hop's downfall. Even though, you know what? And I'm going to complete this series. I'm going to complete this series. I had started on part four and everything. Had it done just about, just had to get the images and all that. Do the last editing. But I just left alone because they kept coming at me, you know. And at that time, it was so important to me that I got certain Bible-related videos out and I couldn't risk with my channel, you know, being put on punishment and all that. Um, so I left alone. I just hadn't been able to pick back up on it, you know. And then my computer had sh shut down just as they shut down my original channel. And I lost a lot. So I lost that part four that I had worked on. But you know what? I'm going I'm to eventually complete it. So y'all let me get out of here. Yeah, how you doing, James and Joan Thomas? Y'all, so maybe we'll come back up in here and... <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. It's like I'm at a point where it's like what Bow I said, one of them F everything moments in a way. But y'all got me feeling a little better, me talking with y'all. Cause I was just gonna report this and then just pass back out to sleep. Um, you know, because it's just really sad news. It just makes me, you know, remind me that, you know, time, time is gonna keep reminding us that we're running out of time so so enjoy your life and you know we got to consider you know we got to take care of ourselves you know it's, it's telling me something you know with the uh because that's something i've been uh you know that's something in my family diabetes so it, it's telling me something a while ago i was on the pre-diabetic tip and had been able to reverse that but i see that i'm slipping up now since I've been out here and in, in, um, out of town, I've been eating very bad. So this is very telling. So um, like when Pr uh, Prince Marky D died, I was going to come up in here and um, talk about the member of the fat boys who's still alive and put some focus on him. So, you know, um, giving us hope because he looks great. Um, and we, you know, let's focus on the living also and, you know, those who are setting good examples. Now, some people being that they are part of this industry, even though they ate healthy, Michael Jackson, Prince, but you know they are part of this wicked industry. So you know what's up with they death. If you don't know, come on. But anyways, I will get back with y'all later. Much peace and much love, family. And thanks for helping me feel better. <laughs>